This video will be a mathematics talk on the following topic. Is the Conway knot a slice knot? Um, this topic is a little bit unusual for me. In fact, it was requested by an audience member and I should warn you in advance, I'm not exactly an expert in this area. In fact, I um, was learning about it by hastily reading up Wikipedia earlier today. So you're kind of been warned that not everything I say is necessarily actually correct. Um, so um, this question, is the Conway knot a slice knot, was an open question for um, quite a long time. It was answered very recently by um, Lisa Piccarillo um, in the following paper, um, who showed that the Conway knot is not slice. Um, I should also warn you, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce her name correctly, and I'm sorry if I've got it slightly wrong. Um, so what I'm going to talk about is, first of all, what is the Conway knot? And secondly, what is a slice knot? And then I'll say a little bit about how um, Lisa Piccarillo was able to prove that the Conway knot is, is not a slice knot. So first of all, let's discuss what the Conway knot is. Um, well, first of all, we should just sort of review what a knot is. So a typical knot might be something like the trefoil knot, which looks something like this. And if you've got two knots, you might want to tell whether they're different. So is the trefoil knot different from um, an unknot? And it sort of looks intuitively obvious that they're different. Um, and for simple knots like this, it's not very difficult to tell whether they're different. But in general, if you've got a really complicated knot and another really complicated knot, it can be really hard to tell whether they're the same or not. And one way to show two knots are different is to look at the Alexander polynomial. So the Alexander polynomial is a certain polynomial. It, it, actually, it's really a, um, um, a Laurent polynomial, um, um, usually denoted by delta of t depending on the knot. And you can calculate the Alexander polynomial of a knot. For instance, the Alexander polynomial of, of this uh, sort of unknot is just 1. And um, the Alexander polynomial of this trefoil knot is t minus 1 plus t to the minus 1. And these are different polynomials, which shows that these are different knots. Of course, for this particular case, it's trivial, but in more complicated cases, it's much easier to tell whether or not two polynomials are the same. And for complicated historical reasons, there's a variation of the Alexander polynomial called the Conway polynomial, which is usually noted by delta of t. And these are related because the Alexander polynomial of t squared is equal to the Conway polynomial of t minus t to the minus 1. Um, so how do you um, figure out what the Alexander polynomial of a knot is? Well, um, you can work it out using the Skine relation. And the Skine relation is a little bit easier to do for the Conway polynomial, so I'll do it for that. So the Conway polynomial of the trivial knot um, sorry, the Conway polynomial of the trivial knot is just 1. So here this isn't a 0 or, a, or an O. It, 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 it's, it's an actual um, knot consisting of just a circle. And if you've got a knot um, like the trefoil knot, then what you can do is you can close in on a, one of the crossings in some plane projection, and you can twiddle this crossing in several ways. For example, you could change it um, like this, where you um, put one link that you see, see that w w one, one piece of string is going under the other piece of string, and you could just change it so it's going over. And another thing you could do is you could just cut these two strings and rejoin them, and you would then get something like this. So um, there are three very close related knots. You know, this one isn't actually quite a knot, it's a link, but let's not worry about that. And the um, what, what's happening is, is you get three different sorts of links here. You, here you get a link, um, so, sorry, a crossing which can be denoted by L minus, 
And here we get a crossing that looks like this, which, which is usually denoted by L plus. And here we get a crossing that looks like this, which is denoted by L zero. So, so this is really a picture of what's going on inside this little circle here. And now the Conway polynomials are related by um, the Conway polynomial of L plus of T minus the Conway polynomial of L minus of T is equal to T times the Conway polynomial of L zero of T, where, where these represent the three knots where you've, where you've done this crossing, this crossing, and this thing um, inside the knot. So this would be L plus, this is L minus and L zero. And you can check this recursion relation actually defines the, the Conway polynomial of any knot. So this is the famous Skine relation. It was actually first discovered by Alexander in about in the 1920s, but everybody forgot about it. He put it in a sort of little footnote right at the end of his paper that nobody paid any attention to. So it then got rediscovered and it was only, only later realised that this was really first found by Alexander. Um, so if the Alexander or Conway polynomial of a knot is not one, the knot is non-trivial. And you can ask the converse. If the Alexander polynomial is equal to one, is the knot trivial? And Conway found an example um, of uh, a knot with trivial Alexander or Conway polynomial where the knot wasn't trivial. Um, so here is um, Conway's um, not, I haven't dared to draw it because I'll undoubtedly get it wrong. So Conway's um, knot is the left-hand one. And as you see, it's got, I think it's got 11 crossings and is a trivial Alexander polynomial. Um, the knot on the right is another knot that also is trivial Alexander polynomial and is something called a mutation of Conway's knot that we'll come to later. So just to explain what a mutation is. You see inside the red circle, um, the two um, the, the knots are the same except that the stuff inside the red circle has been sort of twisted round a bit. Um, so that's roughly what a mutation of a knot is. You, you, you take a subpiece with four bits of string sticking out and you twiddle it round a bit. Um, so uh, next I'm going to talk about what is a slice knot. So um, the first attempt at defining a slice knot um, so we can think of a knot as being a circle inside circle s1 inside three-dimensional space well for various reasons knot theorists don't use three-dimensional euclidean space they tend to use a three-dimensional sphere but there's uh, for, for it's just a minor technical difference um, and um, but I, I want to think of S1 inside R3 for the moment. And what you can do is you can think of R3 as being embedded in R to the 4. And what you can do is you can take a copy of a sphere S2 inside R to the 4 and you can intersect this sphere with R3. So what you're doing is you're really taking a slice of a sphere by, by the standard hyperplane R3. And um, most of the time, um, this intersection will be a copy of S1 um, inside R3. And if that happens, you might try calling it a slice knot. Well, it turns out that's a completely stupid definition because every knot can be obtained in this way. And you can see this quite easily as follows. So Suppose I take a copy of R3 and I'm going to draw R3 as a plane because I'm going to need a bit of extra room to move in. So you have to pretend that this plane is three dimensional. And now suppose we take a knot in R3 and I can't really draw a knot very well because this is a plane and there's not room to draw knots. So pretend this is a knot in R3. And what I do now is I take a point in R4 and I just sort of... Um, join it up to all the points on the knot and then I can do the same thing on the other side 
And if you think about it a bit, you will see that the that, that, that if I do this, I get a copy of um, a two-dimensional sphere S2 whose intersection with R3 is just the knot I started with. Um, so we can't define slice knots quite like that. We would like to define them as slices of a sphere, but the, the obvious definition just breaks down. Well, if you notice, there's something rather funny about this construction. This point here is rather weird. Um, in particular, it doesn't look locally like it doesn't look locally like the standard R2 contained in R to the 4. So you can think of R2 as being a vector space inside R to the 4 and um, you'd really like the sphere to look locally like that. So, so, so um, what we say is that it's locally flat. And this construction isn't locally flat. So we can try saying that something is a slice knot if it looks if, if it's, um, so we can say something as a slice knot if it's locally, so if it's, is a local, if it is a slice of a locally flat copy sphere in R to the 4, or possibly S to the 4, depending on what you, what you want to embed things in. Um, so, so this gives a slightly better definition, but there's still a slight problem with it. So there's a theorem of Friedman from 1984, which says that if the Alexander polynomial equals one, this implies that the, the um, knot is a locally flat slice in, in R to the 4. So it means you can take it by intersecting a sphere with R3. Well, if we use this as the definition of a sliced knot, then this would show the Conway, polyno Conway knot is a sliced knot because it, its Alexander polynomial is 1, sort of. I mean, that, that, that's, that's the interesting thing about the Conway polynomial. It has Alexander polynomial 1. Well, it turns out that um, there are two slightly different concepts of being locally flat. So we can either demand that it's, lo it's topologically locally flat, or we can demand that it's smoothly locally flat. Um, and um, a lot of the time, anything you can do with topological functions, you can do with smooth functions, essentially because any continuous function can usually be approximated as close as you like by a smooth function. But sometimes you can't. And this is one of the cases where it really matters whether you're doing things topologically or smoothly. So Friedman's result says that a knot with Alexander polynomial 1 is topologically locally flat. And this is sometimes called um, to, um, topological flatness. Um, on the other hand, what Lisa Piccarillo proved is that it's not smoothly locally flat, and th this, this is what's more difficult to prove. Um, so um, um, let, let, let's just give an example of something that is um, smoothly locally flat. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, the following knot, let's see if I can draw it correctly, um, um, real knot theorists are much better at drawing knots than I am. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a knot here and you notice that what I've done with for this knot is I've um, taken a knot and kind of spliced, joined it together with its mirror image. So you can think of this as being a mirror and then this is just the reflection of the knot in a mirror. And what I can do now is I can make this knot a slice of a sphere in, in four-dimensional space by sort of um, adding semicircles in four-dimensional space from each point to its mirror image like this. So you should think of these orange 
um, semicircles as kind of sticking out in four dimensions and that gives me half of the sphere and then I can get the other half of the sphere by joining up with semicircles going the going in the other direction in four dimensional space. So anyway if you do this construction you find that any knot that, that's obtained by taking a knot and joining it with its reflection in this way is, is actually a smooth slice knot. Um, well, um, now the problem with telling whether or not, the, with showing that the Conway knot is not a slice knot is the following. First of all, Conway knot is a mutant of a slice knot. Um, and let's just recall what this means. Well, if we go back to this figure here, the Conway knot is, is the one on the left and it's a mutant of the one on the right, mean, meaning you can get from one to the other by sort of chopping out something with four bits sticking out and rotating a bit. And the one on the right um, is actually, a, is actually a, a smoothly sliced knot. Um, well, the other problem is that the Conway knot Um, is a topological slice knot. And this follows from Friedman's result because um, its Alexander polynomial is, is, is trivial. And the problem is, that before Lisa Piccarillo's result, um, we had some methods for showing that mutants of slice knots were sometimes not slice. However, they all worked by showing that the knot was not topologically sliced. So that they completely fail for knots that are topologically sliced knots. That, that there were no ways to show that a, a mutant of a slice knot that is topologically sliced knot is not a smoothly sliced knot. So, um, so this was the sort of hard problem that um, she had to solve. And the, the way it, I, I'm now going to sketch very roughly how the proof goes and for reasons that become obvious in a moment I'm not going to go through the details um, 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 precisely. So, um, so the idea is as follows. Suppose we've got a knot k, so I'm going to write k for a knot, and a knot is contained in S3 and S3 you can think of be, as being the boundary of a four ball. And what we can do is we can form something called the knot trace, which is denoted by X of K. And what you do is you think of the knot in S3 and we sort of add a fattened disc to B4 joined along k which is in S3. So a disc has boundary um, circle S1 so we can join the boundary of the disc to k and then we can fatten it out a bit and we get um, a four manifold with boundary which is called the knot trace. And then you can check that k is smoothly sliced, sorry smoothly sliced is equivalent to saying that the knot trace xk smoothly embeds in, in S4. So um, now Lisa Piccarello's strategy is now the following. So step one, pick a special knot which is denoted by k prime. So I'm going to take k to be con the Conway knot. So first we're going to select k prime and k prime has to have the following property. We want to show that x of k is equal to x of k prime. And thirdly we want to show that um, k prime is not um, smoothly, uh, smoothly sliced knot. And we show that k prime is not smoothly sliced by showing that s of k prime is equal to 2, where this is a certain invariant called Rasmussen invariant, which has the property that s of um, L 
is it not if L is smoothly sliced? Um, so um, if we can show all this, then this will show that the Conway knot is not a smoothly sliced knot because our special knot K is not smoothly sliced because this invariant vanishes. And these two um, have the same knot traces. So if K prime is not a smoothly sliced knot, then K is not a smoothly sliced knot. Um, so there's no reason why this invariant S should be the same for K and K prime, by the way. So the, the clever thing is to, you first have to change the knot to a different knot and then calculate an invariant of this different knot. Well, that's the overview of the proof. Um, the details are kind of um, really rather complicated. So um, first of all, we need to know what the knot K is. And the knot K um, um, looks like this. Let me just check I've got it right. So this, this is the knot K prime and you can see it's already looking a little bit complicated. Um, now we have to do um, step um, two, which is to show that the knot trace of K and K prime are the same. And the proof of this looks like this. OK, well, you start with these rather complicated looking diagrams, which are indicating um, various constructions you do with knots. This is a sort of calculus of four dimensional manifolds that knot theorists use. And it's worse than this because these, this calculation goes on a bit like this. So we've got two pages of these rather hairy looking um, geometric um, manipulations. Um, and I sort of look at these. You know, there's, there, there's a sort of goal which is to formalize all mathematics so it can be computer checked. And imagine trying to take these diagrams and formalize them in some formal language that a computer can check. I really don't envy whoever has to do that in the future. So that sort of does step two, which is um, showing that the um, knot traces of these two knots are the same. Then we have to do step three, which is to calculate the invariant of this strange knot K prime. And the calculation of that looks a bit like this. OK, well, as you can see, this is a highly non-trivial calculation. You need to calculate this large table of numbers in order to work out Rasmussen's invariant. Um, OK, so the, the, the proof sort of is one of these where the step, the, if, if you just look at an overview of the proof, it perhaps doesn't look too difficult. But actually figuring out the details of these three steps is really rather hairy calculation. Um, I must admit, I have no idea how she managed to pick this particular knot K prime. I mean, once you've picked this knot K prime, then checking steps two and steps three is in some sense a reasonably routine calculation. Um, the, the difficult part of this proof is thinking of this process in the first place and picking the right knot K prime. OK, as I said, I haven't put in the details. If you want to check the details for yourself, I'll put a link to the paper um, in the description of the video.